Welcome to Platypus Scotsman, and this is the Swamp Shack house, whatever, part two. I'm gonna go ahead and paint everything on here, uh, brown iron oxide, and then I'll vary the colors later with washes and different things like that. Well, on the toilet paper part, don't paint in one place too long because you'll start working the glue up again. That's the one drawback of using the glue. All right, I made some black wash with some just some cheap craft paint. I don't wanna use known oil because it's I mean, I, I would like to use known oil, but it'd probably take a whole jar for this. So I'm just gonna try to replicate it with this. And I got the consistency I want. I just wanna test it down here. So I'm gonna apply everything from the top down. With this one, I'm just gonna jump right into Hippo Gray as far as the dry brush is concerned. Just put some paint on my brush, remove most of it, and apply a light touch at first, just to see how it goes. I want to do cabinet gray now. It's a lighter gray, but I just want to be able to just hit the highlights, the edges, just bring things out. I'm not going to go as extensive as I did with the other. Well, except maybe on the siding. I might go a little bit more, but. Other than that, like areas like this, I'm just gonna mostly hit the tops. Okay, I kind of toyed around with the look and I think after this dries, I'll be able to do some different things to it to make it look like I want. So the first layer I did was khaki and I didn't really, well, I guess I need to finish my sentence. I didn't really try to paint the whole thing. I just kind of used the side of my brush and just getting most of it, but not all of it. I kind of removed some of the paint off. If not, like right here was a little bit heavier paint. So I'm just gonna go back over that and kind of rob some of the paint and just move it along. Like I said, I'm just kind of using the side of my brush. I don't want to fill in the recesses. So it's kind of a, not really dry brushing because I'm not removing all the paint, but uh, I'm not also doing a blanket coverage either. All right, the next step is a sepia wash or shade or whatever. And I want to bleed over just a tad into the wood. Not a lot. And some of this wood I'm gonna have to redo, obviously just because the it's on the tarp. What I'm going to do now is put some sandstone on it and I don't want to do a blanket coverage either on this one. I don't want to have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm trying to try to use the side of my brush mostly. This is Agrax Earthshade and now I'm just going to cover everything that I just applied the sandstone to. In some places like the edge, I want to be a little bit liberal with just so it pools up and creates more of a shadow like it did over here. And honestly, I didn't know how I was going to paint this. I just kind of was winging it and because of the process and how that turned out, I like it well enough to do it all over the place. So I'm going to go back with sandstone now and just ever so lightly just bring some edges up, not much, just a little bit. I've already done it there. And mostly edges like this on the end. And then some ridges here. Too much. What I'm doing now is I'm just kind of lightly hitting the branches. I'm not really caring about if I hit them if I blanket them or really 
cover them a lot. I just want to give the brown back into them because I'm just going to put a wash over top of it, but this is just a, a dark brown. And then I'll probably end up just do, um, doing a known oil over top of them, make them dark and creepy, and then also I'll just probably do a gray wash. Oh, not, sorry, not a gray wash, but a gray dry brush. But I don't care if it's every little square inch of them is covered. I just want to make sure on most of it around each side is covered or has a little bit of color back into them just to make them stand out. I'm not going to worry about the ones down on the boardwalk. I just want to make sure up here. I might hit those down there with the the known oil as well. So I want the branches and stuff just to be dark and creepy. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm just hitting some areas with some known oil. All right, this is golden brown. Uh, if you saw the obelisk tutorial, you'll know where I'm going with this. I am now painting the ropes a golden brown. And yeah, pretty much the same thing I did in the obelisk tutorial, just because I like the way the ropes turned out. Okie dokie, that was kind of a pain in the butt, and I'm sure the chains are going to be any easier. But now I'm going to go through and paint the chains, the lead belcher. And the reason why I'm not doing the sepia wash on the rope yet is because I'm going to drop sepia wash on the chains too, just to kind of give it that rusted look. If you heard my dog sneeze, there's my dog. The one nice thing about washes and things like that is it tends to kind of hide some of the blends and maybe I didn't go all the way over the rope or things like that. Kind of merges that all together and kind of hides the crimes as uh, Adam Savage would say. Right, I'm going to do Agrax or say I started with Sepia, but it's just not dark enough. And I think I went Agrax the other time. I've just done so many different things that I can't remember off the top of my head. But I'm going to go Agrax regardless. This is a forest green. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to dry brush slash just kind of paint stuff all over just to green things up a little bit. Get rid of some of this gray. I don't want to totally cover the brown because I want the brown to show through too but I want more of a mossy green vegetation look going on I'll also dry brush the bottom of these things to give it more of an organic feel like things are growing up them just where some of the joints are I'm going to probably go through and just do this here and there just to give it a little bit more green now I'm just going to wash the chains with no oil just to darken them up even more all right i was trying to figure out a way to paint the ropes differently than i did on the obelisks and uh i tried khaki at first it didn't work didn't go this doesn't dry brush very well this golden brown so i skipped that so i'm doing antique gold and just got into the groove and never turned the camera on so now i'm doing sandstone shocker and just going to kind of hit the very ends, well, the most exposed or the most bent areas. And I don't want very much paint on my brush at all. Just kind of bleach it out a little bit more. And only on the top parts. Sandstone seems to work with a lot of brown for some reason. And as you can tell, it's one of my go-to. But I want to be very light. And I only want to kind of hit the tops area tops area just to give it one more step of color and I'm just gonna hit the chains here and there with some iron oxide just to brown them up a little bit not a whole lot don't want a lot of my brush when I do it just to kind of give them some rusty a rusty feel that they're not exactly pristine this is Antonio camel shade and what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna darken up the bases where it's gonna be in the swamp and then also darken up kind of like creases and crevices and things like that. That may be, you know, just a little fun guy. This is Matt Mod Podge. I'm gonna put it in where the swamp's gonna be primarily. The reason why is I wanna be able to have, put down a flock in there here, just to have it be absorbed by this. 
Now that the Mod Podge is laid down, I'm going to put some of my mixture of Static Grass, Flock, and all the other stuff that I have mixed together just sporadically through this. This is just now a fine turf, and I'm going to put it over the rest of the Mod Podge. So now what I'm going to do is, a, this is a two-part epoxy, it's in Biotech Light, and this is what I use a lot for the, my water. The only downside of this stuff is it creeps. So it'll creep up a wall just a little bit or over an edge, so you just have to be careful with that and understand that when you do it. You do have a little bit of time to work with this, it doesn't set up fast. And you do want to make sure it's mixed well, otherwise it'll be tacky. Okay, while the water's drying, it's gonna take a while for the water to dry, but I wanna start doing the netting. And this is cheesecloth. And you can find it most places where you have like canning goods or cooking things or stuff like that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna use the forest green. I'm gonna make a wash. It's just to stain the cheesecloth is essentially what it is going, essentially what I wanna do. Oops, way too much. Oh well. I'll leave that in there for a while and then pull it out and let it dry. Okay, now I'm gonna pull this stuff out and put it, maybe. I can't get my tweezers to work. This is parchment paper, by the way. So what I'm going to tackle first with flock is I'm going to tackle underneath the house. And I'm just going to put a whole bunch on this side and just kind of let it run down. And this is uh, Elmer's glue, PVA glue. It's not the super fast drying stuff. I don't want it to be. I don't want it to dry fast. In this case, I want it to. I want some time to work with it. So now I'm gonna use the brush side just to kind of move it around a little bit more. And now I want to give it time to absorb. So I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. We're just going to continue the process. When I say we, I just mean me, of uh, doing that. But now we're just going to do it on the outside. I'll lay some glue down, spread it with a brush, sprinkle some on, let it set for a second, and we'll get this whole thing covered, at least with uh, the flock mix that I have, and then we'll go from there. And don't be afraid to kind of merge it into what you already have on there, just so it has a good blend. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to paint some sepia around the edges and just to darken it because I don't like it all one color. I want some variety, especially when it touches the swamp. I want it to be darker. So I'm just going to go around and do some sepia. I'm going to make sure when I put my brush back in here, there's not a lot of grass or hopefully there's not. It doesn't contaminate it, so I'm going to give me a paper towel. All right, I have a large variety of tufts I'm gonna start putting down. Most of them are from Army Painter. I have a crap load. And I'm just gonna start putting tufts everywhere. 
and I might actually start doing some long grass as well, but I think I'm gonna start with the tufts first. I like to use PBA for the tufts instead of a fast drain glue, because I wanna have some time to work with it. And since I put a lot of time into this project, I'm gonna use a little bit more of my resources because of how much time I've done it, put into this. I want my I want, I want my investment to be a little bit worthwhile, so I'm gonna add more effort into it than I would probably normally would for a video, just because of time. It's not that I don't want to, it's just time. And since I'm running low on this color, I'm gonna kind of try and keep this one localized to where it looks like it's they're more well they're localized I don't know what else to say this one is a winter tough but I like the looks of it so I'm gonna use it on this one okay so I used quite a bit of those and let's move on to a different one Ooh, swamp tough. Let's go with those. All right, I have two colors of ditch weed. One's a light green ditch weed, and one is a medium green ditch weed. It's by Creative Accents. And I'm just gonna use some of those. I pulled the darker one out. I'm gonna pull the lighter one out too. And just use a couple sections of them. There's a band of glue on the bottom. I just like to cut that off personally. Maybe if I was putting it in a ditch, I'd leave it on. I don't want to cut it in a straight line. I want it to be erratic. Since this was square on the kind of the, on the edges, if I put it in there, it kind of this wood right here and this wood right here kind of breaks it up so it doesn't look so unnatural, it gives it more of a boxed in, so I can kind of disguise it a little bit. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and install this one too. All right, this is one of those things that's gonna be hard to come by. Uh, this is a moss that I got off some pine trees up in the uh, up in Wyoming. I'm gonna put this underneath the building, but you can't, you, it's kind of simulating branches and twisted stuff like that. And you can use roots or little branches or twigs or whatever, but that's kind of what I want to go for here. And it'll be just underneath the house a little bit. And I'll have other stuff pin it, pin it in. Just kind of give it that creepy vibe. All right, now I have a variety of long grass that I've mixed together. And just because I don't like one solid color most of the time. In some situations it works rather well, but um, not for what I want to do right here. So now I'm just kind of pinching right there. Gonna cut that to where it's a flat edge. Dip the end in glue. Once it's all dry, I'll kind of, ow. Don't do that. Don't play sharp knives. Parental supervision. So I'm putting very little PVA in here or white glue. I just want it mostly enough to moisten my netting. All right, now I'm just taking them apart, just doing, well, just kind of unravel a little bit. A little bit. They're still damp, which is what I want, but they're not dripping wet. And that's also what I want. I don't want them to be saturated. But I also don't want to take apart them too much to where they lose their integrity and start to unravel.
I'm holding all the places I want it to be to maintain where they're where the, it's at, but I'm kind of pressing it in between where you would think it would naturally droop. Just kind of give it that organic feel to where it's just not stiff all the way across. So I have Antonio Camel Shade now, and what I'm doing is just dabbing in the recesses. I'm not going. I'm not trying to do a paint stroke, but I'm just dabbing. This way, it adds a shadow and doesn't appear just to be plopped down. And since everything else is being painted on here, it just kind of makes sense to do the same with this, just to add variate, not variation, but just to add uh, the shades and different things that you would everywhere else kind of force things but like I said I'm just getting a little bit extra on my brush and dabbing it I'm not hitting the edges because I want the edges to still be light and once it probably once it dries I might actually go back through and just kind of lighten up the edges a little bit just like you would anything else even though it's an organic material and very well it is what it is I don't know what I'm trying to say now it's just one of those things that's really subtle but your subconscious will pick it up this step is a dry brush for the curtains and I want, I'm doing sandstone, but I want it very lightly. I don't want to put a lot of it on there. I want to apply it just a little bit. And the reason why is I, I want it enough to where they stand out in the window, but not like they're fresh and uh, just put up grapes. This is a step I want to add. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, because it's not that crucial, but I want to have a lot of twigs and branches. And obviously my roots are not all the same color. So I'm chopping them up, up into the sizes I pretty much want. And then I'm gonna make a wash out of paint, pour it in there and let them soak for a little bit. But apparently I need adult supervision with a pair of scissors because as I was cutting some, I cut my finger with the very tip of my scissors and uh, sliced myself open. And because they're not really sharp and fine, it's one of those more of a tear. So they're annoying, it's annoying. It's kind of painful actually. But anyway, so, uh, Adult supervision with all the tools and equipment that we have um, is highly re recommended and probably someone who pays attention would be help as well. This is burnt on bar and there's not a lot left in this bottle. So I'm just gonna fill it full of water and use this as the method of creating my wash. These are all the branches that were soaked and I dumped them out, put them on a paper towel, let them dry. And now I'm just gonna start putting them uh, haphazardly around in places. And I will probably come back with alcohol, isopropyl, I think that's what it is, and some mixture of water and, and Mod Podge and glue them down or put over top of them so they can be attached that way. Instead of using white glue, I don't know, uh, I might use white glue too. But for some of the places that I might want to stick these, I don't know if I want to use white glue because it might be just too intrusive. Because some of them I just want to kind of manipulate and I don't know if I want to have them essentially a blob of white glue. Because I want to push them down into the grass like they've settled in some things. So that's what I want to do with that. That's a wrap on part two of the Swamp Shack, and that's a lot of information. Uh, I tried to condense it down as best I could and have it, so it seemed like it was making some sense. Before I get too much further, I'd like to thank the patrons and who support us and who communicate with me and help encourage me and give me some pointers, things like that. I'd also like to thank the people who have subbed to the channel and uh, those who have left comments, given me some ideas, and also gave me props. That's always good too, but 
uh, give me some feedback and things like that. But anyway, if you have any questions or comments, leave, uh, leave them below. I'll be more than happy to help. And also, when you build something like this, you have to take in consideration playability. So you can't do everything that you would probably normally do for like a diorama per se. So you're allowed to kind of put things off where you're maybe not going to put a miniature and maybe make that a little bit more uh, decorative or have more have more stuff there. But even then, you kind of have to keep that balance. Like I didn't want to overload it with a bunch of grass and weeds or reeds or anything like that. Because then you want to be able to place a figure in there. I mean, it's a place you'd want to have somebody going for cover possibly. So that being said, uh, I tried to find that balance, but I was willing to use more resources because of how long it's taken me. And I also like the piece, I'm not gonna lie. I, I like it, uh, it was a personal thing that I wanted to do and get it and get it done. But anyway, if you wanna see more pictures of it, uh, you can check out our Instagram at Platypus Scotsman. There'll be more pictures there and more detail. And like I said, this is part two. There's gonna be one more part uh, where I'm gonna add the final touches to this piece and uh, bring it all together. Anyway, don't want to go much further. I uh, hope everything's going well in your hobby. Hope you're having a good time and hope you have a wonderful new year in your hobby. And remember what my mother used to always say, that anyone can do art. Ciao. Time. Anyway, later.